Before some of you will come at me and say, oh, this boy a caller is complaining too much. Let me show you something. This is Vodafone MiFi. This is MTN MiFi. This is Vodafone Stick. This is MTN Stick. This is MTN TableNet. This is Vodafone, is it TableNet or whatsoever? This is Ether to go TableNet or FlexNet. I see if that is not enough. I have data on almost all of them. Some I have about 200 gigs. Some I have about 140 gig. With some, I don't even remember the data that I have on it. But guess what? They all doesn't work. So think of the most useless thing that you've ever encountered in your life and multiply it by 10. That is what these services are to me. The last straw that actually broke the camel's back was when they told us that some uh, fiber cable and the C cable whatsoever is broken or has been cut off or whatsoever. So Mamu attack Roger B has happened and they've cut off the cable. Internet is no cry for now. One track cable will cry not to that. One track cable will cry everything is intact and cortis and no track cable. So I said no, I have to switch. I mean, after several years, I missed out on opportunity. I work fully remotely. I also do a lot of things online. So internet basically is my life. Without internet, our staff, they are not giving us job. And if you're able to find your own skill and to begin to do your own thing, they frustrate you. And guess what? It's not even their fault because there's no proper customer service check on those kind of services. So the government just take tax and they don't even look at quality assurance to make sure that these people are even giving value to the citizens or the customers, considering the colossal amount of charges uh, on their internet services. So finally, I had enough. I was like, I can't continue on this particular path. So let me switch. I finally decided to get Starlink. So today I'm going to share with you my honest review about Starlink and if it's worth it or you have to stay with what I now call this trash because that's exactly where they are going. So I got my Starlink a week or two ago. I got support from the company that I, I work for and I finally decided to, I mean, get it, all right? So let's look at the pros. Then you go to the cons, then the pricing, then you will decide. So you will decide whether Starlink is also another useless thing, uh, connecting internet from the low orbit satellites or is something good that you may want to consider in your everyday internet life. Number one is download speed. Look, my location is not perfect, all right, because I have some blockades. I have building at the right and also long tree at my left. And Starlink needs on uninterrupted space, all right. It connects to the low orbit satellite, so I think it needs a better space to be able to connect to that satellite. And I don't have that luxury. Even that, my internet speed is as low as 67 megabytes per second, and as high as 140 megabytes per second. Sometimes even it can even go to 200 megabytes per second. So if you're a downloader, if you're a movie streamer and all that, I mean, the styling is currently connected to TV, it's connected to phones, it's connected to anything. And I mean, it's as if nothing is connected to it. Number two is there's no cap. There's no limitation. I mean, you can browse. Uh, it's unlimited. And when you talk about unlimited, I mean unlimited. You will browse unlimited throughout the month. My number three good reason is the fact that you always have access to internet. You don't have to depend on some mamu water grudge to have access to internet, right? We don't use the fiber of tips or whatever. You know, it's a low orbit satellite that is connected to the dish that you buy or the satellite dish that you buy, the Starlink. Uh, device that you buy, all right? So there's no connection to cables or whatever. You just plant it, just point it to the sky and you, I mean, just hope that there won't be any grudge in heaven again. <laughs> That's just by the way. My number four reason is low cost subscription. If you are sharing, I mean, you get to enjoy the lowest cost. I share with my friends, all right? And at the end of the month, we all decide to contribute. I mean, this is my first time, but that's what we have planned to do, all right? So it's low cost. Even with that, you get to the pricing, you can afford to pay it yourself. It's still as cheap as what Yanum are giving us. So don't worry, we'll get to that price. So that is the pros for you. Now let's get to the cons. The number one con on my list is the upload speed, man. The upload speed, it's not really impressive. I mean, I was expecting something really high. I sometimes get about um, 10 megabytes upload speed or 20 megabytes up upload speed and even sometimes 7 and 6 upload speed. So if you, are, if you are an uploader, someone who does a lot of internet transmission, I mean, like basically, I mean, my area can also be a contributing factor and the fact that I've not mounted my dish on top of a building also because it's just placed on ground or something. I mean, I'm yet to decide, all right? I think that can be the reason. So if you use Starlink, you can just tell me if um, uh, it's, 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 a, it's an isolated issue only with me or I mean, it's a general thing, all right? 
the upload speed for me is not impressive. My number two cons is no light, no use. Meaning, if you don't have lights, you can't have your styling. So you can decide to invest in power bank or I mean power stations or even generator. I have a generator, all right. So when there's there, there's no light and I have to work, I just turn back on and have access to it. So if you don't have generator, if you don't have a power station, I mean you would you would and with the power cut that we have in this country, if you're having like one week power cut, it means you'll be paying for services monthly subscription that you are not really benefiting from now, number three on my cone list is rain interruption i mean rain disruption when it rains heavily you see that the internet service get disrupted because i think i don't know there's some kind of disruption with heavy rainfall on i mean it depends i mean nevertheless right when my first experience a couple of days ago it rained heavily i mean great i mean and the power got disrupted but um, it's work in between, it got destroyed for like five minutes and it came back on with high speed. I mean, so, I mean, like, uh, it's not really that bad. I mean, if you can think of Starlink being slow when it rains, then you can imagine all these useless devices that I've depended on for all these years, right? So it's not that bad. If it rains heavily, heavily, you might experience some kind of disruption, but overall, it's still good. I mean, you can get your job done. My number five cone is pretty funny. We just have to hope that there is no war in heaven. I mean, there is peace out there so that we can just get to enjoy <laughs> satellite um, internet, all right? Because a Starlink device or kit communicates with the low orbit satellite, all right? Which means the low orbit satellite should be stable and whatsoever, I mean, should be fine for it to work, all right? So just like we've had interaction, interruption with the undersea cable when something happened undersea, could also have some disruption when there's some kind of space disruption. I mean, we've, we've never had that yet. We just hope, keeping our fingers crossed that nothing will happen to our sweet low orbit satellite. The last one that I have is the setup cost, all right? The setup cost is pretty much expensive. It can cost you between 8,500 to 11,000, depending on where you buy it, all right? For in my case, I bought it at the higher end, but then I later got to know that there are cheaper price out there, all right? So I have some connection that can, that you can buy the Starlink as low as 8,500 or 8,600, 8,700. You don't have to buy it for 10,000, 9,000 or 12,000, 11,000. I mean, the standard kit, all right? So people are quoting astronomical prices out there, all right? But it, it, it depends on where you buy it from. I mean, I have a low source or a cheaper source that can cost you as low as 8500 So yeah, the setup cost is not that easy. Not every Ghanaian can afford that, all right? To be honest. For me, I got a lot of support for the company that I work for, all right? So it's it kind of cushion everything but for average Ghanaian I mean it's not that easy. Another thing that I realize is that sometimes the satellite switches position. I mean today to go to Nigeria and that day it go to France or Germany which means you be watching YouTube then you see different language. I mean kind of basically like it's not a big deal. That one is that's something that you can just work with. I mean it's not even a deal at all all right. So yeah that is my honest review my honest review. So how has my performance been? How has it affected my overall performance? I mean, it has tremendously affected my, over, my, my performance. I don't have internet issue again. When I go to meeting, I join the meeting till the end. I don't get people I work with frustrated. I can now look for opportunities online, all right? Because opportunities online, if you have to meet, if you have to, I mean, work with a team online, agile team online, then you have to have a stable internet connection. Now, it's even a requirement for some company, for they employ you remotely, they want to check your internet speed, they want to check your download, your upload speed, and also your latency, all right? So, for me, it's really helped me a lot. So, guys, that's it, all right? Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.